And welcome once again to Flashpoints. I'm Bob Orr, joined by Juan Zarate, our national security analyst. Juan, good to see you. Bob, great to see you. A topic today, Syria. There have been these reports that Syria perhaps has been moving some of these uh, feared chemical weapons, and there have been warnings from just about every corner, don't do that, don't use those. Right. The fear that the Syrian regime would use chemical weapons as a weapon of last resort or, or one to defend the regime has been out there. We've heard talk about this for the last few months, but recently intelligence has shown uh, movements at these sites where these chemical weapons, sarin gas, VX, mustard gas, uh, are supposedly uh, housed. And so the concern is that the regime is preparing, as it's doing fierce battle for control of Damascus, control of the country with the rebellion, that they may be contemplating the use. And so that's why you saw the president come out very forcefully and warn the Syrian regime not to use them. We've seen uh, Ban Ki-moon, the UN Secretary General, make same, the same kinds of warnings and claims. Um, and the Syrian government has said that they're not going to use them, um, but we just don't know. And one of the dangers of the Syrian powder keg is what happens to those weapons. Even if the Syrian government doesn't use them, what happens? Do they fall into the wrong hands? Does Hezbollah get a hold of them? Do uh, Salafi extremists, people aligned with al-Qaeda, get a hold of them? So this is a major issue regardless of whether or not uh, Damascus under the Assad regime decides to deploy them. President Assad has proved to be ruthless. He's gone after his own people uh, in just about every possible way. But isn't this kind of a special case, a red line, I mean, a, a serious red line that he has to know internationally this wouldn't stand? Yeah, I, I think, and that's the case that I think that President Obama has tried to make. And one could ask, you know, why is this different from an American vantage point? And I think that's the point. It's, it crosses a red line. The use of these kinds of weapons would be horrendous from a humanitarian standpoint. And I think would certainly justify a full force reaction uh, by the international community. And so there would be no question at that point that you're dealing with um, a rogue regime, one that is uh, a, you know, f worthy of all of the opprobrium you could imagine and certainly worthy of, of counterforce. And I certainly think that that would lift objections or might challenge the objections we've seen from Russia in the well, past. Well, where is Russia right now in terms of its support or lack of support for Syria? There seems to be some movement there. Well, diplomatically, they, they are still where they are. They haven't budged at the UN in terms of blocking US efforts for tighter sanctions and, and harsher language against the regime. But you have seen movements. Uh, the Russian uh, representatives have been in Turkey talking to the Turks about what's happening in Syria. You've seen some discussions about the Russians perhaps giving uh, an outlet uh, to, uh, to Assad. Putin may be giving some assurances and maybe he could go live in Moscow. But some discussions about a safe outlet through Russian auspices. And I think the Russians here, as you and I have been talking about, Bob, are probably hedging their bets. They see that things are not going well. The rebels are gaining more territory. They're fighting for control of the airport or access to the airport, control of parts of Damascus. Uh, the days are numbered. This could be, you know, many months still. We've been, we've been talking that, about this yeah. for a while, but uh, I think the Russians are, are smart enough to realize they've got to hedge their bets a bit, and that's why you've seen discussions with the Turks. And just quickly, as we, as we wrap this up, is there any sense anywhere that this is getting closer to a resolution? Any sense that we're getting any closer to Assad leaving? Uh, not voluntarily. I think the, the reality is that you have to read the tea leaves of the battle space. And the reality is the rebels have gained more territory, began, begun to gain uh, more control of towns, some bases that are critical, and starting to fight for Damascus. And the fact that the regime in Damascus has tried to shut down, for example, uh, the internet and communications is a signal that they're very worried about uh, the approaching uh, forces to Damascus. And so I think you have to read the battle space. Assad will not go voluntarily, in my estimation. Uh, he will have to be forced out. Uh, and there's nothing indicating that that's about to happen. All right, we'll keep an eye on that, as we always do. Juan, thanks as always. Thank you, Bob. Thanks to you for watching Flashpoints. I'm Bob Orr. We'll see you again next time.